Bang bang. Hi everybody and welcome back to Anime Waffle, a YouTube segment where I quite literally waffle on about anime. Hi, I'm Amy, I'm one half of Tanda Cosplay and today our video is inspired by the release of The God of High School. I have done a lot of fight scene watching um, and there's probably way too much for this video alone so we will be probably looking at the more popular anime at the moment and then maybe looking at the lesser known ones in another video if you manage to get through this one and if you have any suggestions or any anime that you think i should watch as well then please remember to like comment and subscribe especially comment if you've got things that you want me to say and i'll see if i can get around to it you're welcome Despite the anime itself, in my opinion, lacking a little bit of momentum, I can appreciate the hard work that has gone into creating the fight scenes in The God of High School, and that's what we're going to be looking at a little bit today before I reveal my top anime fights. So God of High School was an anime that I was really looking forward to. The initial trailer that came out showcased some spectacular fight choreography and that instantly drew me in and made me think you know what i really want to watch this anime i am a massive fan of fight scenes whether it's tv or film or anime and i've even attempted some of them myself and even though i suck at their execution i can appreciate just how much hard work and dedication goes into creating and choreographing fight scenes in general in the case of God of High School, it works a little differently. Director Sung Ho Park wanted the action in this anime to be the best part and it is essentially what drives the narrative forward. In the God of High School, they use motion capture to record the fight scenes live to use for reference with the animation itself. And they are using the same stunt team that worked on Garo, which is also um, one of the works of the director of the God of High School. The issue that I have is that the protagonist has godlike abilities and so do the rest of his kind of combatants and at the moment there doesn't seem to be a challenge in place it was very much that he uh challenged one of the commission i guess i don't know i can't remember what i called i'm so sorry um and all of a sudden we have these kind of stand like things appear from nowhere and it was just like oh okay so he's he's an amazing fighter then he's an amazing fighter and she's an amazing and there doesn't seem to be any kind of challenge in place at the moment and I think for a fight to work well you need some kind of um, disparity in in strength but anyway today's video isn't about the god of high school <laughs> who would have thought though I am happy to discuss that in greater detail should it be something people want me to rub it on about sorry not rub it waffle I'm just gonna <laughs> so what things are there to consider in a good anime fight now this isn't law don't be triggered by the things i'm about to say but in my opinion the things we look for in a good anime fight are the meaning of victory and defeat what does it mean for the characters of the story if the character wins this fight or what would happen if he loses he or she loses the fight what is the actual goal here also the participants mindset and the psychology of the fight the clarity of capability for example in the god of high school they're all godlike there's no attention there yet i still haven't read the webtoon which is still ongoing by the way the balance of power is it strong versus the weak in terms of physical ability or mental ability or is it totally one-sided we look at the strategies and tactics used within a fight is it very clever or is it very kind of hit them as hard as you can and see what happens the choreography the animation style which obviously differs between animes uniqueness of the fight is it something we haven't seen before are they fighting with wooden spoons are they using i don't know pens you know we've seen it with john wick right what the transition is to the actual fight scene itself how does it fit into the narrative is it something where we've just kind of plonked in the middle of the narrative or is it something that's going to drive the narrative forward um, 
by the end. The emotional impact of the fight on our characters and the characters around them. It's very much linked to the, the victory versus loss. What would it mean to these characters if they lose? What would it mean to these characters and the people around them if they win the fight? For example, we see it in My Hero Academia. I know I'm using that example a lot, but it does have a lot of those stereotypical tropes where if All Might had lost his fight against All For One, what would the outcome have been? And the second, the kind of final time we see him stand up against All For One, what would happen if he had lost that fight? To the people around him or to the public? What would it mean as a symbol of hope? That kind of thing. That's what we look for in a really good fight because if they don't have some of these elements, then what's the reason for the fight in the first place? So here are my top 10 fights of the moment. Okay, I've still got a lot of anime to watch and I know that some people are gonna be like, ew, I didn't even put the... You're allowed your opinion, it's fine. But from my point of view, these are the fights that have stood out for me at the moment. Spoilers, people. Okay, number 10. Castlevania. I know. I know. It's not technically an anime because anime is Japanese and this is a Western animation. But it does use an anime-esque animation style, so I'm just I'm gonna sneak it in. Mix it up a bit, you know. You couldn't stop me before. I was alone before. It's a pretty long ass fight. So here we have another character with daddy issues who teams up with his friends to settle a decade long family feud and I liked it. It has the right level of sophistication and execution and I like how the characters each have their own fight style it's, and they kind of team up to take on this one opponent. And I liked how the characters actually get hurt because in a fight against Dracula, the king of hell, you're probably gonna have a few scratches. This fight shouldn't be easy. You're essentially fighting a king of hell and he's Do I? You died when my mother died, you know you did. This entire catastrophe has been nothing but history's longest suicide note. There are tempo shifts, a variety of fight styles and change in atmosphere. So to consult my list of fight scene tick boxes, here we go. Transition to the fight scene. Well, the main cast have stormed the castle looking for a showdown. The meaning of victory or defeat? Well, it's going to prevent the destruction of humanity. If they win, if they don't, then Dracula is going to wipe out humanity. The participants' mindset and psychology? Well, Alucard has clear daddy issues. The clarity of capability? Well, it's immortals versus mortals. Strategies and tactics? Well, it's three on one. The emotional impact? Well, Alucard ultimately, spoiler, has to kill his father and then live with that guilt. Okay, number nine. We have something from One Punch Man that it does not feature Saitama. Sorry. It is worth stressing at this point that Garo has had his ass handed to him by Saitama previous to this scene. And I mean, Saitama's punches are enough to knock anybody out. I mean, that's why it's called One Punch Man. <laughs> Garo is a human who believes he is destined to become a monster. And in this fight, he showcases that sheer monstrous talent that seems to evolve and demonize as the fight progresses. <laughs> Like many with his capabilities, he's a meticulous overthinker who is able to analyse his opponents with ease and whilst he is the obvious antagonist, I can't help but root for this guy. A comment I did read about this fight was, when you thought you beat Garo but his HP bar changes colour and you start hearing boss music. So again, if we look at our kind of ticky boxes, the transition to the fight scene, Garo's recovering from an altercation with Saitama and is tracked down by the kind of hero core. Meaning of victory or defeat? Well, Garo wants to prove himself as a monster. He's not a very good monster if he has his ass handed to him by some subgrade heroes. The participants' mindset and psychology. Garo's been defeated before by Saitama and he can't understand why. Um, clarity of capability. Um, Garo starts off at what we think is a disadvantage. There's more heroes there than there are versions of him and he has already had his ass kicked by Saitama. Strategies and tactics, well it's multiple heroes versus Garo. Emotional impact, well 
really Garo needs to see himself as a monster and he has to win this fight for that so the emotional impact is kind of bragging rights I guess <laughs> Number eight, I've snuck in Inuyashiki. Which is an anime for me that kind of popped up out of nowhere. It's 11 episodes long and it is freaking amazing. The series follows two very different individuals who ended up being part of the same bizarre accident as their paths are destined to clash. The two in question are 58 year old friendless Inuyashiki who is mellow, non-confrontational and part of a family that doesn't really give a toss. The other is teenager Shishigami Hiro who uses his new gifts to kind of go on killing sprees as you do. I chose this as it combines different animation techniques and robot men fighting is actually pretty interesting. In particular, the whole thing of the finger guns is, is pretty hilarious. So participants mindset, while well, Hiro feels like the world is against him and Inuyashiki at this point is just desperate to go and save his daughter. There's an ongoing fire and he's on his way there and that's kind of where his head's at at the moment whereas Hiro essentially is in his way. Um, meaning a victory or defeat, well Shishigami is a dangerous homicidal maniac that just needs to be stopped. Participants mindset and psychology, well Shishigami feels like the world's against him really and Inuyashiki just wants to do what's right. Poor guy. Clarity and capability, Inuyashiki hasn't mastered his abilities, yes, but Shishigami has. Strategies and tactics, well, they're... Bang, bang. Seems to be an effective one. The emotional impact, well, Inuyashiki obviously is worried about his daughter and he's desperate to go and save her. And Inuyashiki just wants to save people. Number seven. We now have Vinland Saga, which should have won best anime of the decade. <laughs> For this fight, I picked one of the fights between Thorfinn and Thorkel, the second one. <laughs> Vinland Saga is one of the most underappreciated animes of this decade. The manga as well is just... Not only does it enrich your historical knowledge, well, it embellishes it a little. But it manages to have the same tenacity of superhero genres, but in a Viking setting. I mean, Viking swords, fights, and anime. Yeah. Thorgal loves a challenge, and despite him being somewhat of a villain at this point, he is such a likeable character given his love of the fight and how enthusiastic he is for new challenges and new challengers. This fight is the second time they face off after an unexpected clash in the first instance. Thorgal is decidedly traditional in his approach, not wanting anybody else to interfere with the fight at all. I mean, if you do step in, I think he'll take your head off, and I think he does at one point, literally. <laughs> The reason I like this fight is it's such a David and Goliath moment. I mean, really, in the kind of bare bones of it, we've got this giant man, Thorkel, who's super strong against a very tiny boy who, yeah, is quite a quick little ninja, but if he takes one hit, he's gone. He's, he's dead. Transition to the scene, while well, Thorkel has been chasing Thorfinn and his band since the beginning of this particular part of the anime and Thorfinn has a chance to escape but he returns to save Askeladd so that he can like kind of continue with his revenge plot. Askeladd can't die because he needs to be the one to kill him. Meaning of victory or defeat, well it's very much like I said, Thorfinn needs to win so that he can survive long enough to challenge Askeladd again. The participants mindset and psychology, well Thorfinn is full of fury at this point. Uh, clarity of capability, well Thorkel is Jimungus and Thorfinn isn't but he does have kind of quick attacks which can be a little hasty and I think that's essentially his downfall. Um, strategies and tactics, well Thorkel hits really hard and Thorfinn hits really quick. The emotional impact, well Thorkel, Thorkel loses an eye and Thorfinn almost dies but survives enough to essentially continue with his his revenge plot. Number six. 
Now, I had this further up my list, like near a 10, but I rewatched it, and oh my god, it's amazing. After what could possibly be the worst season of My Hero Academia, with repetitive episodes and a storyline that, quite frankly, did not have me gripped, even with the death of, spoiler, or what happened to, spoiler, and it was such a shame because it could have been a tearjerker of a season. I mean, gentle criminal. The f Enter Hawks and Endeavor. The episode starts off as quite mediocre. We got to meet some new characters and the elusive Hawks that cosplayers have been gushing over since forever. Quick cuts, tension building, a feeling that all is lost, more peaks and troughs, and then wham! Endeavor goes full go-go. The fight itself lasts the entirety of the episode and the fight is supported by Hawks who seems to be one of the few characters who sees Endeavor's real potential. It's, it's heartwarming. The fight stands for more than the conflict itself. There's a fight to surpass All Might and live up to his new rank as number one, regret over the sacrifices that he's made with his family and the relationship with his son, but saying plus ultra, plus ultra, at the end just kind of cemented him as a character who is willing to go beyond his own expectations and abilities for the greater good. <laughs> Um, transition to the fight scene while Monster Attack City, heroes respond. Meaning of victory or defeat, while well, Endeavor's now number one and has a lot riding on the outcome of this, it's a test to prove himself uh, and to see if he's worthy of that title. Participants' mindset and psychology, no fear. But there is a sense of desperation when things aren't going the way that they're supposed to be going at this point. And clarity of capability, no more adapts, so the kind of capability shifts, so we think that we you know, our characters think that they've won and then something happens and it evolves. Then they think they've won again, but then it evolves again. And then there's kind of this desperation of, well, are we ever gonna win this fight? Strategies and tactics, hit hard and hit fast. Emotional impact. Well, I think it's summed up just in the... Number five. A pretty obvious one, I'm sorry, but it is really pretty. <laughs> now for me, I had my hopes built up for this episode way before it aired because social media was just full of the oh my god, episode 19. And I was so good not to go ahead and kind of Google what happens because I am a total spoiler whore but I didn't, and I'm so glad I didn't. It is another example of when all hope is lost type of fight. We can see the protagonist at his limit, but then something happens and then they're all able to come back fighting. But in this fight, it's the unexpected team up that kind of wins it for me. We didn't know that these characters had these abilities and it then goes on to cement the relationship that Tanjiro keeps protesting about with his sister and it proves that together they can do great things. The visuals in this fight are stunning. Demon Slayer has such a well done art style that embellishes scenes like this with grace and fluidity that's addictive to watch. Transition to the fight, well it's a rescue mission. Meaning of victory or defeat, well hopefully they get to eradicate a really powerful demon that keeps killing everybody. The participants mindset and psychology while well, Tanjiro has an unrivaled determination and this need to protect others so he's gonna do it no matter what. Clarity of capability well at this point is it, is it Rui? 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 Seems unstoppable. 
He uses supernatural abilities and he has already wiped out half the people who've gone to fight him. So it seems very one-sided and that traditional attacks won't work very well. Strategies and tactics, well, if I run really fast with a flaming sword, or maybe not a flaming sword, or maybe a water sword. Um, the emotional impact, we see the close bond that Tanjiro and Nezuko have and how it's evolved physically with the kind of um, creation of demon art powers that can be transferred. Amazing. <laughs> Number four. Like Demon Slayer, it has a very unique, pretty art style. And it's at this point that we do start to see similarities between the fights that I do like. There's always an emotional undertone that drives the fight forward, and in this case, it's no different. Just like Demon Slayer, there's a unique sibling bond. So in this case, he is trying to save his brother that's become embroiled in a very difficult situation. We know that when he hits that monumental 100% that he will unleash a power unbeknownst to those around him and in season two, go even beyond that, spoilers. The reason I chose this fight in particular is because Rob has a focused reason for fighting. So the style in which he executes his power is different as his emotions are being unraveled in a completely unique way to what we've seen beforehand. We've seen him fight ghosts and spirits beforehand and he does it just because, well, because Regan tells him to. Again, Mob Psycho utilizes an art style that we see in one of Studio Bones' other creations, My Hero Academia, with a changing of animation when momentum shifts. The whole whiteout for really powerful attacks, much like Todoroki vs. Midoriya. <laughs> A transition to the fight, Mob goes to rescue his brother, meaning a victory or defeat Mob needs to um, rescue his brother from this ridiculous company. The participant's mindset and psychology, well, we see this through his percentage bar. He starts off very calm and then 100%. Clarity of capability, well, it starts off very one-sided. Mob gets his ass handed to him and then the percentage bar goes up and 100%. Strategy and tactics. Um, <laughs> the emotional impact, well I think, well, again the percentage bar kind of shows that he's angry, he's furious, but I think uh, this particular fight has more of an impact on Ritsu than it does on our poor mob. Number three. I know it's another obvious one, but we have to talk about Meroem versus Netero in Hunter x Hunter. Naze tataka? Huh? Sono ho ni kachime wa nai. Yatte mo mine de wakaru ka yo. Mita me de handan suru to. I mean, this fight is as much a battle of wits as it is a battle of power. I mean, this entire arc is just pure creative genius. And I will admit, it was another of these kind of animes and arcs where I was going into it thinking, ugh, Chimera and stuff. After what I thought was a really great arc beforehand, and then it was like, ugh. But then, Chimera Ants. This fight is the pinnacle of this entire arc and it is very much a battle of wits. With each one underestimating the other and both having godlike abilities. It is a case of never judge a book by its cover but also have a backup plan if that goes tits up. This fight makes it here purely for the psychological value of the fight. It is as much a physical confrontation as it is a mental and verbal one, with the words in the conversation as deadly as the physical attacks themselves. Both fighters have a clear, strong-willed ideal that they are both willing to die for and they both believe is right. 
And if it's not the good guy and plan A, B, C, D, E, F, fail, then just drop a nuclear bomb on him. I would say more, but just watch all of Hunter x Hunter, especially the Chimera and Ark. Transition to the fight scene, a freaking epic arc. Meaning of victory or defeat? Well, humanity is at stake, again. The participants' mindset and psychology both are very level-headed and embody in an individual ideal they believe is the right one, so it's a clash of ideals. Clarity of capability. Both are superhuman, and when one seems to get the other hand, it's then flipped and flipped again and flipped again. Strategies and tactics. Well, both are incredibly forward-thinking. Emotional impact. This fight sets up quite possibly one of the most heartbreaking scenes I think I've seen in anime. Well, mm, assassination classroom, just, just don't. Next we have some honourable mentions. So yes, I know there are a million and one fight scenes I could have possibly put in, but these are the ones that really get my fire going. Not so much a fight, but I put Reagan versus Shimazaki just because of just, it was hilarious. <laughs> Next we have Saitama vs Boros. The reason I did not put this fight into my top list is because it's obvious. Saitama is an amazing character who can fight awesome. The reason I think it would have gone in my list is because it's a fight. It's an actual fight with Saitama. A one where he actually gets to fight as opposed to one punch. Next we have Zoro versus Daz Bones, purely because I love Zoro. I wish he had more more epic fight scenes, but I'm sorry, the Wano arc at the moment in the anime is ruining it. I also have Iggy versus Pet Shop. When I first watched this, I was on the edge of my seat. It is so tense. And finally, my top two fight scenes. And they kind of go hand in hand because they're the same character and it's the same anime. And I know you know what I'm about to unleash on you. Levi versus the Beast Titan and Levi versus the Military Police. Kenny! I know, I know, it's a little obvious for the best fight scene, but it is. You will know that if you find yourself constantly replaying a scene or putting it on loop, then it must be good. But in this case, it's all kinds of shit hot amazing. <laughs> and Levi never fails to impress with an acrobatic display of raw talent. I have chosen two action fight scenes from Attack on Titan for the top spot, and I don't have to tell any avid anime fan just how amazing the creation of Levi Ackerman is. The first is the popular Beast Titan scene and if you haven't seen it please make sure that you watch the anime up to that point because the reason that this fight is so good is because of the emotional build-up before this point. He single-handedly proves to be the best member of the scouts with his unmistakable mastery and flawless execution of the ODM gear. The Beast Titan fight is beautifully animated and showcases why anime is the perfect medium for executing amazing fight scenes. There is a video somewhere on YouTube that breaks down this particular fight frame by frame and just shows you how incredible it is. The transition into this fight is heartbreaking with a buildup that is just pure tragedy. So for this fight to be successful, the end had to be satisfying. And my God, it was. The second fight, is Levi again. But this time is a mid-air defensive fight chase against Kenny and the military police. I like this one a lot purely for the desperate speed in which the fight ensues. <laughs> and how it was a brutal attack and it wasn't even being led by the show's biggest antagonists, which are the Titans. These guys were human and showed about as much mercy and they're smaller, quicker, and they're just as strategic as our hero. Transition into the fight scene, and we're gonna stick with the Beast Titan scene for this, is an emotionally charged, somber, live or die build up, all hope is lost, kind of fight, kind of transition. Meaning of victory or defeat? Well, literally the last hope for what they think is humanity. The participants' mindset and psychology, <laughs> raging. Clarity of capability. We know that Levi is superhuman, even the antagonist admits he is one to watch, but the Beast Titan, until this point, has annihilated 
everybody. Strategies and tactics. Well, we don't see his thought process, but there's obviously been a lot of behind the scenes talk with Levi about what he needs to do. And he is calculated in his attacks to get his desired result. And we know that the Beast Titan wasn't expecting any of it. The emotional impact, just all of the emotions. Whew. You made it this far. Well done you. If you have enjoyed this long ass video, then please remember to like, comment with whether you disagree with me or agree with me and hit subscribe and if you liked it so much then maybe you like to hit that little alert bell button as well and it'll let you know if i'm doing any else about anime and stuff so until next time this is anime waffle